The biggest challenges facing our particular research, um, our focus is on finding objective and behavioural measures of visual snow in the first place, hoping to characterise and localise dysfunction. Though the biggest challenge is obviously determining what those mechanisms are, coming up with the most suitable measures, not only for continuing the investigation, this is not, not going to be an easy investigation because of the complexity of the visual system, but coming up with measures that we can then use in turn to monitor treatment response. So once we understand the disorder, we start generating treatments that are more applicable to the disorder, they're more effective in the disorder, then we're going to develop a range, then we will have, sorry, not we're going to develop, we will have a range of objective measures of the efficacy of those treatments. Um, the biggest challenges uh, for what we do is, is probably finding funding for the research that we do. It, it's, it seriously is the, the major issue and we have a significant commitment and research in Australia is not funded as it is in, uh, say, the United States and in some parts in Europe. But um, that's from a research perspective. From a clinical perspective, in patients with visual snow syndrome, uh, you have to find a way that you can actually help the patient when you know that you can't cure the patient. Uh, and they're not necessarily the same thing. So helping the patients, uh, you need to find what that individual patient needs that's going to help them come to terms with the fact uh, that their problem is, at least at this stage, incurable. Probably not incurable forever, but at least at this stage, incurable. So it's helping them to come to terms with it, and that is a major challenge. Well, I feel like I've overcome uh, the biggest challenge of visual snow, which is essentially learning how to manage the symptoms and to learn to be comfortable with the symptoms. So for me, I think the biggest challenge I face now is essentially trying to raise awareness in the medical community and essentially help the people that are currently suffering from visual snow. Um, obviously, I can't do this on my own, but I'm just trying to do what I can in my free time in order to help move the ball forward. And I'm just very happy that there are organizations like the Visual Snow Initiative that are actually taking this ball and moving it forward at a rapid pace. Uh, because the stuff that I'm able to do on my own is essentially speak in front of uh, a bunch of doctors at a medical conference and essentially educate a room full of people or create a video on the internet that might educate you know, 25,000 people. But what they're going to be able to do is essentially start a movement that will get people uh, aware of visual snow, hopefully get funding increase for visual snow, and get the research done that needs to be done so that all the people out there that are suffering from visual snow will have somewhere to go to. When we first started doing uh, research in visual snow, the biggest challenge we faced was that some of the, uh, many people didn't believe it existed. So um, we had to come up with a definition that wouldn't include everybody, but would include enough and be tight enough and be uh, usable by other people so that we could start to compare results across places. Um, so th the first big challenge was to just get an agreed definition. And then the next big challenge is to communicate to someone vision. It's, it's what you see. Now, I don't see what you see, I see what I see. And communicating that using the words people say and converting them into some sort of picture that makes sense gets you a start to be able to study it. Now in many ways, the research has come of its age in the context of, um, of brain imaging. If we didn't have functional brain imaging, and that functional brain imaging is where you can watch the brain behave. So as I'm talking now, the speech parts of my brain are active. And when they're active, blood flow goes to those areas. And you can monitor that uh, with brain imaging. And so we've been able to turn those techniques, brain imaging techniques, into, onto the question, of visual snow. A doctor could go his whole career and not see a patient with, with visual snow. And that goes for the, uh, the neurology community too. This drives the patients crazy because they usually come out of the office thinking the doctor or the neuropsychiatrist thinks they're crazy. And that's certainly not true, but it's, it's so rare that they don't have a reference point. Although we've begun to describe and characterize visual snow and to understand parts of the brain uh, that are involved, I think it's fair to say that there is no single treatment that works for everybody. And in fact, most treatments that are, that are used are actually not useful for most patients. Lack of treatment is the probably the single biggest challenge 
I face when I see someone with visual snow.